This is uh, MathHeals.com where you can find more links to uh, math and computer science YouTube videos. Let's take a look at uh, product and quotient rules and higher order derivatives. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's look at our product rule first. Try it again. Uh, there you go. So product rule. And uh, this says if we have the derivative of something times something, then that's going to equal to p prime q plus p q prime. And it really is as vague as that. Something times something. Uh, it can be anything. Um, just as long as we've got two things multiplied together. One of them can't be zero, of course. But um, Then, if we have um, the... I'll wake up here eventually. Need to write the name down first. Quotient rule. <laughs> Quotient rule goes like this. If we got the derivative of something divided by something, that's going to equal to p prime q minus p q prime over q squared. A lot of books will use f and g's in these, and I don't particularly like that uh, convention. Um, because f f of x is often written as our, our original function. So that gets real confusing. So I like to use p's and q's. So let's take a look at our first problem here. We've got f of x is equal to 7x minus 2 <coughs> times x to the fifth plus 3. Well, and it tells us to um, use a product rule to differentiate the function. Um, if it didn't tell us that, it'd probably actually be simpler in this one. Just multiply these together and take the derivative of it then. Um, but we're trying to demonstrate the product rule. Well, here we got something times something else. So this is P and this is Q. Now for our formula, we need P prime and Q prime. So let's find P prime. We'll take the derivative of P, which is 7, and we'll take the derivative of Q, which is 5x the fourth. Remember, if you have extra power, you put your power out in front, lower it by 1. Now, from our formula, we got p prime q plus p q prime. So, for our derivative, p prime we said was 7 times q, which is x to the fifth plus 3, plus p, which is 7x minus 2, times q prime, which is 5x to the fourth. Now, this is considered one group. And this is considered one group. Now what makes those groups is this is 7 times this, and this is this times this. We look at each group, and we ask ourselves if there's something we can factor out, something they have in common. And these don't have anything in common. So what we'll do is we'll multiply everything together, combine together like terms, and hopefully it'll simplify a little bit. If possible, you always try to make a product. You always try to have something times something times something. Okay, well, and if you can't do that, then get rid of parentheses and combine together like terms. 7 times x to the fifth is 7x to the fifth. 7 times 3 is 21, distributive property. Over here, 5x to the fourth times 35, at, or 5x to the fourth times 7x gives us 35x to the fifth. 5x to the fourth uh, times a negative 2 gives us negative 10x to the fourth. And let me double check that. Well, here we got an x to the fifth, and here we got an x to the fifth. Uh, so we're going to combine the numbers in front of them. That gives us 42 x to the fifth minus 10 x to the fourth uh, plus 21. Now, uh, I don't see where they have anything in common, so this would be your answer. If they did have something in common, I'd factor it out. Now, I would have got the same thing if I'd uh, multiplied these together and, and then took derivative of everything. Um, 7x times x to the fifth is 7x to the sixth, and then you take 6, put it out in front, multiply by what's out in front there, and lower it by 1, and you get your 42x to the fifth. Um, negative 2 times x to the fifth, uh, take the 5, put it out in front, I'd have negative 10x to the fourth, which is that. And 3 times 7x is 21x, would give us 21.
So you'll find you get the same answer if you do uh, algebraic uh, manipulation as if you use these formulas. Now, number our second one here, second example, we've got f of x is equal to the cube root of x times cosine x. Now, we, we never want to leave things in radical form, so we'll all, always want to write it in fractional power form, rational exponents. So this becomes x to the one-third times cosine x. Remember, whatever number is in your slot here, that's called your index, goes in your denominator. Whatever power is inside goes up on top. Well, now we have something times something. So this is our p, and this is our q. Now, um, we want to find the derivative of each one. So p prime, uh, take your power, put it out in front, and lower it by one. Which gives us one third x to the negative two thirds, and we don't want to leave any negative exponents, so I'll take that uh, back down to the denominator. So we've got one over three x to the positive two thirds. And for q prime, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So now we're ready to plug it into our formula. So we've got p prime q plus p q prime for a product rule. So f prime, uh, p prime is um, this right here. So we've got 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds times q, which is cosine x, plus p, which is x to 1 third, times uh, q prime, which is negative sine x. So that gives us um, cosine x uh, cosine x over 3x to the 2 thirds minus sine x times x to the 1 third. And I'm going to put this over 1 because uh, we'll, if possible we'll try to get a single fraction. Now, sometimes they'll do that, sometimes they won't. They'll always get rid of negative exponents. Um, now, a very basic way of getting a common denominator is to multiply two denominators together. So my common denominator is going to be 3x to 2 thirds. Now, this first fraction already has it. On my second fraction, to get my new denominator, uh, I need to multiply the bottom part by 3x to 2 thirds. And whatever you multiply by the bottom, you multiply by the top. So multiply the top part by 3x to 2 thirds. So then we got cosine x over 3x to 2 thirds minus. Um, now the 3 I'll go ahead and put out in front x to one-third times x to two-thirds. When you got x to a power times x to a power, you add the exponents. One-third plus two-thirds gives us three-thirds, or one. So this just becomes x. And then the sine x. And then down below, one times three x to the two-thirds is three x to two-thirds. Well, now that they have the same denominator, I'll go ahead and um, combine together the top parts. So I got cosine x minus three x sine x all over 3x to the 2 thirds. Now every book's kind of different in this regard. Some of them might have stopped right here at this step. Um, some might actually combine them together. When you got a mixture of trig functions or transcendental functions and um, just regular polynomials, sometimes they just leave them separate. Let's take a look at our next one. This one's a quotient rule. And do I have room? I think I have room. Famous last words. Okay, so uh, quotient rule is pretty obvious to see. It's you got a uh, quotient this time divided by this. The top part's always your p, and the bottom part's always your q. So that's my p, and that's my q. P prime, the derivative of x squared plus 3 is 2x. And Q prime, the derivative of 8x minus 1 is 8. 
And our quotient rule says p prime q minus p q prime over q squared. So our derivative, p prime was 2x times q, which is 8x minus 1, minus p, which is x squared plus 3, times q prime, which is 8, all over q squared. Now this is considered one group here, and this is considered one group here. And again, what makes them a group is we got this times this times this, and we got this times this. So everything's multiplication. Now as I look at these two groups and see what they have in common, they both have a 2 in common. So we'll factor that out. That's our GCF. And that's going to leave us x times 8x minus 1. And then I'll this uh, 8 divided by 2 gives us 4, so I'll put that out in front. So we've got minus 4 times x squared plus 3 over 8x minus 1 squared. Okay. Well, there's nothing else I can factor out, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the parentheses, combine got like terms, and see what happens. Um, we got x times 8x. That gives us 8x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x or negative x. Negative 4 times x squared is negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12 over 8x minus 1 squared. And then I'll combine together like terms. 8x squared minus 4x squared gives us uh, 4x squared minus x minus 12 over 8x minus 1 squared. Now let me think this through for, for a second to see if this uh, factors. Uh, let's see, 4 times 12 is 48. Uh, 1 times 48, um, 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12, 6, uh, no, I don't see anything. Um, so that's our answer. Now again, we try to, um, we try to factor down, break it down as much as possible, because we'd like everything to be a product if we can. And we didn't do anything with the bottom part, because 8x minus 1 squared means 8x minus 1 times 8x minus 1, so that's product, really. And, uh... Again, we try to try to write everything here as a product if we can. Let me save that. This is good. This is waking me up. Calc one product quotient rules. I order derivatives. Page zero one the PDF. And let's look at our next problem. Okay, so we got H of X is equal to X squared over the square root of X plus 2. Again, we never want radicals, so the square root of x I'll rewrite as x to the 1 half, plus 2. And even without it telling us to use the quotient rule, we, ha uh, we know we have to, because we've got a, this divided by this. So this is our p, and this is our q. So we need to find p prime and q prime. I guess I'll do it over here. Um, p prime, the derivative of x squared is 2x. For q prime, um, x to a power, take your power, put it out in front, and then lower it by 1. The 2 disappears. So that gives us 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And take that uh, x to a negative power down to the denominator. It becomes x to the positive 1 half. So our formula says um, p prime q minus p q prime over q squared. So h prime. p prime was 2x times q, which was um, x to the 1 half plus 2 minus p, which was x squared, times q prime, which was um, 1 over 2x to the 1 half. All over q squared.
Okay, let me check that. Uh, P prime times Q minus P times Q prime. Okay. Well, again, I'm going to look at my... Um, well, actually, first I see, notice I have a fraction inside of a fraction. So first thing I want to do is get rid of that. Now, um, that's called a complex fraction. And you want to multiply everything by the LCM of all your inner denominators. We only have one inner denominator. And that's this fraction right here. That's uh, the inner denominator comes from the fraction inside the fraction. So we're going to multiply everything by the LCM of all our inner denominators. only have one, so that is our LCM. So we're going to multiply everything by 2x to 1 half. So I've got 2x to the 1 half times 2x, x to the 1 half plus 2 uh, minus, and uh, actually I guess I'll put that in fraction form. That x squared I'll just put up on top. So we got x squared over 2x to the 1 half times 2x to the 1 half over 2x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half plus 2 squared. Okay. So the um, 2x to the 1 halves cancel there. And here we got 2 times 2, which gives us 4. x to the 1 half times x. Well, if there were to put a power on this x, that'd be the first power. When you got x to a power times x to a power, you add the exponents. So I got 1 half plus 1. That gives us 3 halves. And then the uh, x to the 1 half plus 2 carries down here. Minus x squared over... 2x to the 1 half, x to the 1 half plus 2 squared. Let me grab a drink here. Hmm. Now, as I look at the top part, I got one group here, and I got one group here. When I say group, again, this is 4 times this times this. And this x squared is x times x, so just one term anyway. As I look at what they have in common, it appears they both have... Um, I could rewrite this 2. This 2 here is the same as 4 over 2. So here I got x to a power, here I got x to a power. So I want to factor out um, x to the 3 halves. You always factor out the smaller exponent, which would be the 3 halves. So I got x to the 3 halves, I'm factoring out. And then that's um, going to give us 4 there times x to the 1 half plus 2 minus, if this is 4 halves, I took 3 halves away, then that leaves me x to the 1 half. Over 2x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half plus 2 squared. Okay. Well, now, here I got x to one, 3 halves. Here's x to 1 half. And everything's multiplication in, the, in these. I got this times this, and this times, well, this times this times this. So um, that's why we can simplify these. So you get x to a power times x to a power. We're going to subtract the exponents. 3 halves minus 1 half gives us uh, 2 halves, which is um, just 1, but I, I'll, I'll write that in the next step. So this becomes x to the 2 over 2 times. There's nothing else I can factor out, so I'm going to get rid of parentheses, combine together like terms, see what happens. 4 times x to the 1 half gives us 4x to the 1 half. 4 times 2 is 8, minus x to the 1 half. Over, that's gone, so I'm left with 2, times x to the 1 half plus 2 squared. Well, of course, this becomes x. Four to the four to the four x to the one half minus x to the one half gives us three x to the one half plus eight over two x to the one half plus two squared. Probably at some point during this video, I'll make a basic algebra mistake, so I'll go ahead and apologize now. Probability of me not making one is kind of slim. I could go off of a script, but then this would be, these would become boring to me, and I wouldn't do them anymore. 
Uh, it's kind of fun doing it um, on the fly. Um, let's see. Let me double check that. Okay. So it doesn't look like I can factor anything else out. So that's as good as it gets. So I'll, I'll put them back in a radical form. Sometimes the book does, sometimes they don't. Uh, x of 1 half is the square root of x so plus 8 over 2 times square root of x plus 2 squared. Um, and again, everything's written as, as a product as much as I can. This times this, this times this, and of course squared means we know we got two of them. But that'd be your answer. So let me save that. And uh, let's look at our next problem. I'm going to grab a drink, too. Ah. Let's see, I got f of x is equal to sine x over 5e to the x. And then c is equal to 0. And they uh, tell us two things. First, find derivative, and then find f prime of c. So we want to find our derivative, then plug 0 in for x. Well, to begin with, this is the quotient rule. Got something up on top, divide by something on the bottom. So this is p and this is q. For our formula, we need p prime. The derivative of sine is cosine. And we also need q prime. Uh, anytime you have a number out in front, the number stays out in front. And derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So in our formula is p prime q minus p q prime over q squared. Heard a crash in the house. I wonder what that means. I don't hear anything else. Must be okay. <laughs> uh, p prime is uh, cosine x. Told my son not to interrupt me unless the house is on fire. And Q is 5e to the x minus P, which is sine x, times Q prime, which is 5e to the x, over Q squared, which is uh, 5e to the x squared. Okay, now as I look at this, um, let me double check that since the noise kind of threw me off. Uh, P prime times Q, yep, minus p times q prime, yep, over that. Okay. As I look at the top, again, this is considered one group, and this is considered one group, because they're all multiplication. This times this times this, this times this times this. I notice that they both have a 5e e to the x in common, so I'll factor that out. And that leaves us cosine minus sine. Now, 5e e to the x to the second power means 5e e to the x times 5e e to the x. Now I got this times this and this times this, so these 5e e to the x's right there are going to cancel. And we're going to be left with cosine x minus sine x over 5e e to the x. Not a whole lot more I can do with this simplif simplifying wise. And that's our f prime. So now we're ready to plug a 0 in. So we've got f prime of 0 is going to equal to cosine of 0 minus sine of 0 over 5e to the 0 power. On our unit circle here, um, here's uh, the angle 0. And this point would be 1, 0. Now cosine is the x part on our unit circle. So uh, cosine of 0 is 1 minus... And sine is our y part. Sine of 0 is 0. And uh, e to the 0, anything to the 0 power is always equal to 1. So this would give us um, 1 fifth as our answer. Actually, I guess they were asking for two things. They were asking for the derivative and that. So I guess I ought to circle both those. Sometimes... 
things that appear to be a uh, product or quotient, you can use algebra manipulation on them, make them a lot easier. And this is one of them. And the instructions kind of imply that. It says complete the table without using the quotient rule. Now, I've run across students that will let this equal P and this let this equal Q, and then they'll go ahead and solve it. And it'll give them the correct answer. But they really do not need to work that hard. Now, notice we have a single item down here. Whenever you have a single item down here, you can always split them into separate fractions if that help you. So we can put the 8x to the third over 5 minus 1 over 5, which then gives us 8 fifths x to the third minus 1 fifth. And now everything's x to a power or a, co a constant. So if we take our derivative um, for this one, uh, take your power, put it out in front, lower it by 1. And the uh, negative one-fifth derivative of a number is just zero. So this gives us 24 fifths x squared is our answer. It's a little bit bigger there. This is another one very similar to the one we just did. We'll get y is equal to 5x to the 4 thirds over x. Now, and this time, we just have a single item up here and a single item down here. Um, so, But this is x to a power, and this is x to a power. Well, the x, of course, is x to the first, if I were to put that. If I were to put it uh, with the same denominator as the top uh, exponent, we'd have 3 over 3. There we go. So, if you got a um, x to a power over x to a power, you subtract the exponents. So this is going to give us 5 and 4 thirds minus 3 thirds gives us x to the 1 third. And now it's in a lot better form for us to take derivative. 5 stays out in front, take your power, put it out in front, and lower it by 1. Which then gives us y prime is equal to 5 thirds x to the negative 2 thirds. And as always, we don't want negative exponents, so I'm going to take that back down to the denominator, and it'll become uh, positive. Whenever you move something opposite of where it's at in a fraction, the sign of the exponent changes. And that's our answer. Now, I don't think I have one of these examples in here, but I, I do want to show it because uh, it, if you run across these, it just makes it so nice. If I had something look like this, um, I could use quotient rule. Uh, this is P and this is Q. Go through a bunch of steps, a lot of simplifying, and then find out um, what my answer is. Or I notice that top part factors. It's a difference of two squares. So that's going to be equal to x plus 1 times x minus 1. And you notice after I factor the top and factor the bottom, the x plus 1 is going to cancel. And then we end up with y is equal to x minus 1. So then to find our derivative, this is just an additional example. Then to find our derivative, it just gives us 1. Easy as can be. But if you don't spot that, you're going to find yourself doing a lot of extra work. Let me save this page. And let's look at our next problem. We'll grab a drink here, too. Okay. So we've got f of x is equal to 2x of fifth. And then we got 2 plus 3 over x minus 1. Now, I could use a product rule here, take this times this, and then this would be P, this would be Q, and then w when I found Q prime, it has the uh, quotient rule in here. Um, well, there's an easier way to do that. We could um, merge these together. 
Now, as weird as this seems, this is a mixed number form. Um, remember the mixed numbers when you had like three and a half? You took three times two, uh, gave us six, and added the number on top, and that gave you seven halves. Well, this is the same idea. So here, we're going to take two times x minus one, and then we'll add what's on top. And our denominator stays the same. So that's going to give us 2x to the fifth times 2 times x is 2x, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 3 over x minus 1. And then that's going to give us 2x, negative 2 plus 3 is 1 over x minus 1. And then we'll multiply this uh, 2x to the fifth across the top. So that's going to give us 4x to the sixth uh, plus 2x to the fifth over x minus 1. Now by doing this, uh, we put it in a little bit simpler form for us to use. Now if you found a derivative of this, how much extra steps would it be? I have no clue. Hopefully it's uh, less than what I just did right here. So now we're going to use quotient rule. This is our p and this is our q. I'll do them over here. So p prime. Um, again, take your power, put it out in front, lower this by 1. 4 times 6 is 24, x to the fifth. This one, take your power, put it out in front. 2 times 5 is 10, and lower it by 1. And q prime, the derivative of x minus 1 is 1. So now, our formula says p prime q minus p q prime over q squared. So our derivative of whatever we're working with, f, f, yeah. f prime is equal to p prime is 24x to the fifth plus 10x to the fourth times q, which is x minus 1, uh, minus p, which is uh, 4x to the sixth plus 2x to the fifth times q prime, which is 1, over q squared, which is x minus 1 squared. Let me double check that. p prime q, I'm just feeling kind of kind of off this morning. I've been all the chili I ate yesterday. I made some chili and it was pretty good. Okay, now looking at this first um, group here, and specifically the first parentheses in here, they have a, they have a GCF. 24 and 10, uh, they're both visible by 2, so I can bring a 2 out. And they both have 4 x's, so I'll bring out an x to the 4th. So 24 divided by 2 is 12, and we're left with 1 x there. Plus, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and all those x's are gone, times x minus 1. Now looking at my second group here. This parentheses here, they both are, have a GCF of 2 x to the 5th. 4 divided by 2 is 2. I had 6 x's, took 5 out, so we're left with 1 x. And uh, then plus 1. Okay, let me double check that. So 4 x is 6 plus, yeah. All over x minus 1 squared. Okay, now if we look at our two groups. And again, this is our first group, everything's multiplication. And this is our second group, everything's multiplication. I see they both have a 2x of 4th. So I'll factor that out. And uh, that leaves us 12x plus 5 times x minus 1 minus x times 2x plus 1 over x minus 1 squared. Well, there's nothing nothing else I can factor out. So I'm going to get rid of parentheses, combine together like terms, and hopefully factor it again. So i got 2x to the fourth. Um, 12x times x is 12x squared. 12x times negative 1 is negative 12x. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Negative x times 2x gives us negative 2x squared. Negative x times 1 is negative x over x minus 1 squared, which gives us 2x to the fourth times 
12 x squared minus 2 x squared is 10 x squared. Negative 12 x um, plus 5 x minus x. Um, negative 8 x. And then I got a negative 5. Over x minus 1 squared. Now let me double check that. Uh, minus 12x plus 5x minus 5 minus 2x squared minus x. Mind to get like terms. That gives 10x squared minus 12x minus 13x minus 8x minus 5. Okay. Now don't think this factors. 10 times 5 is 50. 1 times 50. 2 times 25. 5 times 10. So. Um, that's as much as I can break it down. Again, we try to write everything as a product if we can, like this times this. So let me save that. Let's look at our next problem. This one has a little bit of uh, algebra um, simplification to it, also. So I got f of x is equal to the square root of x times the fifth root of x plus 2. Well, we know right away that um, we don't want radicals, so this becomes x to the 1 half times x to the 1 fifth plus 2. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and um, since I got a single single uh, item out here, single radical, um, I can take this and use the distributive property and multiply it through. Real easy. So remember when you got x to a power times x to a power, you're going to add the exponents. So we got x to the 1 half plus 1 fifth. So 1 half plus 1 fifth. And x to the 1 half times 2 gives us 2x to the 1 half. Well, if we get a common denominator, which would be 10, this becomes 5 tenths plus 2 tenths plus 2x to the 1 half, which then gives us x to the 7 tenths plus um, 2x to the 1 half. And now we can uh, easily take our derivative. And you could use the product rule up here if you want to do that. So take my take my power, put it out in front, and then lower it by one. So we got seven tenths minus one, plus two. Take my power, put it out in front, and then lower it by one. So that gives us seven tenths x to the negative three tenths, plus x to the negative one half. Two times one half cancels. Now we don't want negative exponents, so we'll take those um, to the denominator. So this becomes 7 over 10x to the 3 tenths plus 1 over x to the 1 half. <coughs> um, now I need to get a common denominator. And um, to get a common denominator, I need to get a common denominator in the exponent. This is x to the 3 tenths. I'm going to rewrite this one as x to the 5 tenths. Now to merge these two together, uh, of course number wise they both have a 10 in common. It's always your x to your largest power, so I want x to the 5 tenths. And um, I want to do it a little bit different. I, I didn't show all the steps in class, and I want to show them here. So we got x to the 3 tenths. And then over here, x to the 5 tenths. Okay, oops, 10. Now to get our common denominator, well, this one had a 10, so that one's fine. This one I multiplied the bottom part by 10, so I multiply the top part by 10. Now let's look at the x to the power. This x to the 5, ten, x to the five tenths was already there, so we don't have to change anything there. But here, to get x to the 5 tenths, I have to multiply the bottom part by x to the 2 tenths. 
And whatever you multiply by the bottom, you have to multiply by the top. So that gives us 7, and then 2 tenths, of course, reduces to 1 fifth. And down below here, when you got x to the 3 tenths uh, times x to the 2 tenths, you add the exponents. 3 tenths plus 2 tenths gives us 5 tenths. And 1 times 10 is 10, so we got 10 x to the 5 tenths. Okay, they have the same denominator now, so I'm merging them together into a single fraction. So we got 7x to the 1 fifth plus 10 over 10x to the 5 tenths. Well, um, 5 tenths is the same as 1 half, reduces that, so I'll go ahead and write it that way. They probably don't put it back in radical form, but if they do, what it'll look like is 7 the fifth root of x plus 10 over 10 square root of x. And that's our answer. Uh, do I have room for the next problem? What's it look like? Uh, probably don't. Uh, let me save that. our new page. And this is another simplification one. Let me grab a drink. Got f of x is equal to 3 plus 1 over x over x minus 5. Now here again, the simplification here is we got a fraction inside of a fraction. This is our inner denominator. Your inner denominator is a denominator of the inside fraction. Um, and to simplify this, you multiply everything by the LCM of all your inner denominators. Well, we only got one, so that is our LCM, so multiply everything by x. So multiply the 3 by x, the 1 over x by x, the x by x, and the negative 5 by x, which gives us 3x plus 1 over x squared minus 5x. Now that we've simplified that, we can use the quotient rule. So the top part's going to be our p, and the bottom part will be our q. So we've got uh, p prime is the derivative of 3x plus 1 is 3. Q prime, the derivative of x squared minus 5x is 2x minus 5. And our formula says P prime Q minus P Q prime over Q squared. So F prime, P prime was 3 times Q, which is x squared minus 5x, minus P, which is 3x plus 1, times Q prime, which is 2x minus 5 over q squared. So we've got x squared minus 5x squared. Let me double check that. Um, p prime times that minus, okay. Looking up on top at our groups, this group and this group, they don't have anything in common. Um, this one has some x's, I could factor out an x, but these don't have a x in common. Um, so I can't do anything there. So on top, I'm just going to get rid of parentheses um, and combine together um, like terms, and hopefully it'll factor them. So I got uh, 3 times x squared gives us 3x squared. 3 times negative 5x gives us negative 15x, minus 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x. 1 times 2x is 2x, and 1 times negative 5 is negative 5 over. The bottom part here, though, these have an x in common, so I can factor that out. So we got x times x minus 5 squared. And, oops, just scroll that down. Now, um, back up on top, we are going to um, have 3x squared minus 15x minus, combine together like terms, negative 15x plus 12x is negative 13x plus 5, or 
minus 5. And down below here, if everything's multiplication or division inside your parentheses, and you're raising everything to a power, you can take uh, everything to that power. So I'll take the x to that power, and I'll take the x minus 5 to that power. Okay, back up on top. When you got um, a negative out in front of your parentheses, it's going to flip the sign of everything inside, so this becomes a negative 6x squared plus 13x plus 5. Flip the sign of everything. Now we'll combine together like terms. 3x squared minus 6x squared gives us negative 3x squared. Minus 15x plus 2x gives us negative 2x plus 5. Over x squared, x minus 5 squared. Now the top part I can factor out a negative 1, or just negative. And that gives us 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. Over x squared x minus 5 squared. And I think top part factors. Uh, let me see. 3x x 5 plus minus 1 x squared, x minus 5 squared. Let me see, 3x squared minus 3x plus 2x. Yeah, factors that way. That's the key number I used. Did that in my head, but uh, that was a key number. Now, nothing nothing will cancel, but I factored everything as much as I can, so this will be our answer. So, yeah, find derivative. <laughs> Guess I should look at that. So let me save that page. That one actually worked out really nice. I couldn't believe it because I made the numbers up. The odds of um, me making up numbers and coming out nice are very slim. I told my class I need to go uh, buy a lottery ticket. So it must be destined to win. Now the next problem... Oops, time for my tablet to blow up. Okay, bring that up again. The next problems um, the are transcendental functions. And um, these are some new derivatives we'll take a look at. First off, let's look at secant. If I'm trying to find a derivative of secant, secant I can rewrite as 1 over cosine. It's one of our properties. You can always rewrite it in fraction form. And if I did that, this is a quotient now, isn't it? This would be my P, and this would be my Q. So P prime, would, uh, derivative of 1 is 0. Q prime, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So then P prime Q minus P Q prime, this is why these are in this section, is because all four uh, secant, cosecant, cotangent, and tangent, you can write in fraction form and do the same thing. Um, so then this becomes P prime, which is 0, times Q, which is cosine x minus p, which was 1, times q prime, which is negative sine x, over q squared, which is cosine squared. Now 0 times anything drops away, negative times negative is positive, so this ends up with sine over cosine times cosine. That's what that squared means. And I can split this up into sine over cosine times 1 over cosine. Sine over cosine is tangent, and 1 over cosine is secant. So the derivative, and usually these are flipped around, the derivative of secant is secant tangent. Well, let me write down my formulas here. So the derivative, I guess I might as well just put down this one I just did. To secant is secant tangent. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. The derivative of tangent 
is secant squared. And the derivative of uh, cotangent is equal to negative cosecant squared. Now there's an additional one that's thrown in here. The derivative of e. Uh, did we cover e to the x? No, I don't remember. But uh, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Sometimes I mix the classes up. So those are formulas we'll be uh, we'll be working with. We'll grab a drink here. Okay. So th for this problem here, we got h of x is equal to three over x squared plus five secant x. Well, first off, I can't have x to a power trapped down denominator like that, unless I want to use a quotient rule. But since the top part's a 3, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'm going to rewrite that as 3x to the negative 2. So if you can easily rewrite it in that form, then do so. Plus 5 secant. And now for our derivative, then. Um, again, take your power, put it out in front, and lower it by 1. So that becomes a negative 3. If you got a number out in front of your uh, transcendental function, just keep it out in front. And we already said the derivative of secant is secant tangent. Now, I'm going to rewrite this back into fraction form. Um, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And this x to negative 3, since it's got a negative exponent, I'll take it down to the denominator. So it becomes x to the positive 3 down there. Plus 5 secant x tangent x. If I had to guess, they'd probably leave it in this form in the book. But if they don't, um, and they get into a single fraction, how you do that? Of course, they both need to be in fraction form. So I can put that over 1. And the easiest way is to get a common denominator is to multiply the two denominators together. So x to the third is our common denominator. So this will become negative 6 over x to the third plus, and here I multiply the top and bottom by x to the third, so this becomes 5x to the third, secant x, tangent x, over x to the third. Which then becomes negative 6 plus 5x to the third, secant x, tangent x, over x to the third. I could have rewrote secant and tangent in terms of sines and cosines, but then it would have been a pretty nasty fraction. And there's probably not a whole lot of benefit to doing that. So let me save this. Sometimes there is benefit because when you when you do that, you find things will simplify really nice. But not in this case. Okay. Take a look at our next problem. So we've got h of x is equal to x squared over cosecant x. And uh, find derivative again, this is instructions. Well, this will be our p, and this will be our q. So we need p prime and q prime. P prime, the derivative of x squared is 2x. And uh, Q prime, the derivative of cosecant, is negative cosecant cotangent. So our formula, P prime Q minus P Q prime over Q squared. P prime is 2x times Q, at, or times Q which is uh, cosecant x minus p, which is x squared, times q prime, which is uh, negative cosecant x cotangent x, over um, q squared, which would be cosecant 
squared. Okay. Uh, I was having some indigestion while I was doing that, so let me double check that. <laughs> Darn that chili. It was good. I made it really spicy. When my wife makes it, uh, um, she doesn't do that. Maybe I see why. <laughs> okay, negative, negative becomes positive. So this is 2x cosecant x plus x squared cosecant x cotangent x over cosecant uh, times cosecant. That's what that squared means. Now, if I look at my groups up on top, I got one group here and I got one group here. Uh, everything's multiplication. So I see they have an x in common and they have a cosecant x in common. So I can factor that out. So that x is gone, that cosecant's gone, so we've got 2 plus x and um, one of these x's is gone and this cosecant's gone, so we're left with a cotangent along with that x over cosecant x times cosecant x. Now since it's this times this times this and this times this, this cosecant cancels that cosecant. Couldn't do it before because it, not everything was multiplication. So that's going to give us x times 2 plus x cotangent x over cosecant x. Now um, I could rewrite cotangent as cosine over sine and this is 1 over sine and then I could multiply everything by sine um, probably wouldn't benefit me a whole lot unless I just didn't want to leave things in terms of cotangent and cosecant. Um, instructions don't really indicate so um, I'm going to leave it in that form. If you are curious what it would look like if I rewrote this 2 plus um, and then this would be x times um, cosine x over sine x and this would be 1 over sine x. If I multiply everything by sine x, I don't have to actually multiply the x by it because this is a product up here. So I just multiply what's inside the parentheses by sine. So this would become x times uh, 2 sine x plus, when I multiply this by sine, the sines cancel and I got x cosine x all over 1. Actually, that works out pretty nice, doesn't it? Sure. I uh, guess I uh, guess they probably would go further. What if I did that in class? Um, so then I got x times two sine x plus x cosine x. So again, that looks a little bit easier, a simpler form than the other one. Um, I didn't see that to begin with. Sometimes on trig, uh, I guess I got rid of my last one. Sometimes on trig, it's beneficial to rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine because it'll simplify nice. Sometimes it doesn't doesn't benefit you at all. So let's see what's my next one. I probably have room. Grab another drink. I don't think I have room. Okay, so this be number eight. There we go. Now let's look at our next one. Okay, thirteen. Why? is equal to e to the x over 3e e to the x plus 1. And uh, what's the instructions? Find derivative? Yeah, find derivative. Well, this is a quotient rule. So the top part will be our p, bottom part will be our q. p prime, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. you got to love uh, e to the x. q prime, um, the 3 stays out in front, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And the 1 drops away. So then our p prime q minus p q prime over q squared. y prime is equal to p prime, which is e to the x, times q, which is 3e e to the x plus 1. 
minus p, which is e to the x, times q prime, which is 3 e to the x, over q squared. So we've got 3 e to the x plus 1 squared. Let me double check myself here. Um, it's always cross multiplying like this right here, so it's kind of easy to check. Now, if I look up what's up on top, I got one group here, I got one group here. I notice that they both have an e to the x in common, so I can factor that out. And that'll leave us 3e to the x plus 1 minus that e to the x is gone, so 3e to the x over 3e to the x plus 1 squared. And uh, I'm going to combine together what's inside my brackets here. i got 3e to the x minus 3e to the x. That cancels. So we got e to the x times 1 over 3e to the x plus 1 squared. And which gives us e to the x over 3e to the x plus 1 squared. That one worked out really nice. And I did have room in that last page, but oh well. Okay, let's look at our next next problem. Number 14. Given f of x is equal to cosecant x sine x at point 0.22. Two. Now it says evaluate the derivative of the function at the given point. When we say evalu evaluate the derivative of the function at the given point, we're saying find the slope of the tangent line which we've seen those instructions before in a previous lesson. But let's refresh your memory. Find the slope of the tangent line. And again, that's the same as the uh, evaluate the derivative of the function at the given point. I won't write all that out, but... Step one. We need to find our derivative. that can spell. <laughs> That's bad. Pretty sure that was wrong. I go back to bed. Derivative. Well, this one has a nice little trick to it. Uh, sometimes when you've got uh, trig involved, you can use your identities to make it simpler. Uh, and then things will cancel away. Like cosecant is 1 over sine. And uh, then this just remains sine. So then 1 over sine times sine gives us 1. So then our derivative... Ah, what am I doing? The derivative of 1 is 0. So, step 2 change our derivative notation, I'll just say f prime, to m, and plug in the x part of the point. So change that to m, and plug in the x part of a point. Well, the x part of a point is this right here, um, 2. But we don't have any, any x to plug it in for, so it just remains 0. So this one is pretty easy once you, once you saw the shortcut. Now, if I didn't see the shortcut and I started using the product rule, this is p, this is q, went through all of it, I did my trig and, and did simplifying and so forth, I'd find it gives me the same, same item here. It gives us 0. So uh, you can freely use those to make your problem simpler. So let me save that. Time for my tablet to blow up. I'll bring up another copy. There we go. Let's look at our next one. This one's not not as easy as, as that one was. Let's see. We're given f of x is equal to 
tangent x times sine x minus cosine x. And it's at the point pi over 4, 0. And it says evaluate the derivative of the function at the given point. So it's the same steps we've been doing. Um, now I could um, rewrite this as sine over cosine, and I could multiply it through. Probably wouldn't benefit us a whole lot since we haven't covered chain rule yet. Um, uh, though you could do it another way also. Um, but it doesn't look like simplifying would really help us. So I'll let that be P, and I'll let that be Q. Well, for the product rule, we know we need P prime. Uh, derivative of a tangent is secant squared. For Q prime, the derivative of sine is cosine minus... The derivative of cosine is negative sine, which means this becomes cosine plus sine. So our formula is p prime q plus p q prime. p prime is secant squared times q, which was sine x minus cosine x plus p, which was tangent x, times q prime, which was cosine x plus sine x. Let me double check myself here. Uh, this times this, and this times this. Yeah, it looks right. Now, I could simplify this. I could probably uh, spend a huge amount of time doing it. I don't think it would benefit us a whole lot. Because we're going to plug in this point anyway, aren't we? That was step one. Step one was find your derivative. Step two was to uh, change this to m. You don't have to actually change it to m since you're just saying find a value derivative. We just really want the right side. But we'll plug in the x part of a point. The x part of a point is pi over 4. So I'm going to have secant squared of pi over 4 and then times sine pi over 4 minus cosine pi over 4 plus tangent pi over 4 times cosine pi over 4 plus sine pi over 4. Okay. Here's pi over 4 and I got square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. Now if you remember for secant, secant is equal to 1 over x on our unit circle. So this is, and this is, it's squared, so we're going to have 1 over x, and x is square root of 2 over 2 squared times Oops. Sine. Sine power of 4. Sine is our y, which is square root of 2 over 2. Minus cosine of power of 4. Cosine is our x, which is square root of 2 over 2. So that first part's going to drop away anyway. Plus tangent. Tangent is our y over our x. And they're both the same. So this will be um, square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2 times cosine uh, pi over 4. Cosine is our x, which is square root of 2 over 2, plus sine of uh, pi over 4, which is square root of 2 over 2. Sine is our y. Well, I said the first part drops away. Here we got uh, square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2. Since these are the same, that just gives us 1. And here, since these have the same denominator, we combine together the top parts, and uh, we combine these together by adding numbers in front of them. So that gives us 2 squared or 2 over 2, which the 2's cancel, and that just gives us m is equal to squared or 2. And um, I'm going to save that. I'm not sure if I have room for the next one. page 10.
let's look at our next one. Grab a drink. See the end in sight. So I'd rather be doing this. I gotta go wrap Christmas presents after I get done with this. And you're sitting there looking at the calendars like Christmas. He's it's February. <laughs> but my wife's family, uh, we always get together to celebrate Christmas and over the holidays everybody was sick, so useless information you didn't want to hear. Uh let's see. F of X. So we're celebrating it today. My wife had to go into work this morning, so um I'm wrapping presents. So I figured I'd do the fun fun stuff first and put that off. <laughs> I love doing this. Okay, now the instructions here says find equation and tangent line. I would have actually created this last night, but I was freezing. I live in an old house and doesn't have very good well it doesn't have any insulation what I'm talking about. Find equation of the tangent line. Okay, to refresh your memory on the steps. Our first step is to find a derivative. So for f prime, um, the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. Step two, change f prime, whatever notation you have here, it could be y prime, to m. And plug in the x part of the point. Well, this is the x part of our, of our point. This is our y part. We'll use that in a minute. So this changes to m is equal to negative um, cosecant pi over 6 cotangent pi over 6. Okay. That's not quite where pi over 6 would fall, but uh, close, close enough. Um, if I look at this point, that's square root of 3 over 2, and that's 1 half. And um, cosecant is 1 over y, and cotangent is x over y on our unit circle. So we're going to have negative 1 over y. If I come over here, our y part is 1 half times x, which was square root of 3 over 2, over y, which is 1 half. Okay. Now, when you got a um, single fraction downstairs like this, you can flip it and multiply it times your top part. So flip this becomes 2 over 1. 2 over 1 is 2 times 1 is 2, so that's minus 2. And whenever you have a fraction over a fraction and they have the same denominator, those denominators cancel. We've got square root of 3 over 1, which is just square root of 3. So that simplifies that way. Now our third step. Plug in m from step 2. And the given point for x and y into y equals mx plus b and solve for b. Okay, well, if I come up here y was 2. So I can put uh, 2 in for the y. m we just said was negative 2 square root of 3 and x was pi over 6 plus b. And then solve for b. Well this gives us um, if I put this a single fraction that gives us negative 2 square root of 3 pi over 6 plus b, which is uh, the 2 and 6 uh, reduced, so that's negative square root of 3 pi over 3 plus b. Take that over to the left side, and we've got 2 plus the square root of 3 pi over 3 equals b. 
And uh, this is a mixed number form, so I can take 2 times 3 is 6, and then add the top part. So we've got 6 plus square root of 3 pi over 3 equals b. And step 4 was to write your answer. Now you're, um, if, if you're not in my class, your particular instructor may teach you to use a point-slope form. I don't uh, teach that. Um, used to teach it, and then I had a Japanese student one semester ask me why I was teaching it, and I said, well, you need both to pin what it looks like. And he proceeded to prove me I could do 100% of the problems with this, and I like that. I like one formula that works all the time. Uh, let's see, m was negative 2 square root of 3, so I need to plug that in x, and b was 6 plus square root of 3 pi over 3. And that's our answer. And I'm out of space there, so let me save that page. His particular school, um, where, where he went in Japan, they uh, they'd never teach point slope form. Oh, I like that after he, he showed it to me. He's right. He could do everything with the with the slope intercept form. Okay, let's look at this one. We've got y is equal to x squared plus three over x squared plus four. The instructions here say determine the point. Um, at which the graph of the function has a horizontal tangent line. So find a point where the graph has horizontal tangent line. I don't think I covered this in a previous lesson. So these should be brand new. Our first step find the derivative. Well, this is a quotient rule. Got something divided by something else. So this will be p and this will be q. So p prime will be 2x and q prime will be 2x. So we got p prime q minus p q prime over q squared. So y prime, uh, p prime was 2x times q, which was x squared plus 4, minus p, which was x squared plus 3, times q prime, which is 2x, over q squared, which is x squared plus 4 squared. Uh, let me double check that. Okay, this times this, this times this, minus between them. Now, notice up on top, those both have a 2x, so I can factor out a 2x, and that's going to leave me x squared plus 4 minus, and then I'll leave this inside of parentheses, x squared plus 3 over x squared plus 4 squared. Now, um, back up on top, simplifying what's inside the brackets here, we're going to have x squared plus 4. A negative in front of the parentheses flips the sign of everything inside, so this becomes negative x squared minus 3 over x squared plus 4 squared. Now x squared minus x squared drops away. 4 minus 3 is 1, so 1 times 2x is just 2x over x squared plus 4 squared. And that's our derivative. Step 2. Set the derivative equal to 0. and solve. Because when we're saying a horizontal tangent line, um, if we look at uh, tangent lines all through our graph, here's one, here's one, here's one, when it reaches the top here it becomes a horizontal tangent line where m is equal to zero. That's your slope. So we're gonna, we're gonna find, we'll talk more about this later, basically that helps you to find mins and maxes. So we're going to set this equal to 0. 
So we got 2x over x squared plus 4 squared equal to 0. And we want to solve this. Well, since the uh, beginning of your algebra days, uh, whenever you've had a fraction and you're solving anything, you always uh, multiply everything by the LCM of all your denominators. Well, we only have one denominator, so that is our LCM. So we're going to multiply both sides by x squared plus 4 squared. And multiply the 0 by a 2. Okay, over on this side, these going to cancel, and that leaves us 2x. And on this side, 0 times anything is 0, so that disappears. Basically, the shortcut on it is if you're solving an equation, and you have a fraction, a single fraction, equal to 0, you can just take your top part and set it equal to 0. And then I divide both sides by 2. But the reason why that works, though, is with those steps I just showed you. That's why it always works. And we get x equals 0. Then our last step, plug the x value, and I'll put an s here because it could be more than one, into the original function and find your y value. And again, I'll put an s there because you can have more than one. Well, I'm about out of space here, aren't I? X equals zero. What was our original function? So y is equal to x squared plus 3 over x squared plus 4. So plug zero in for x. So I got zero squared plus 3 over zero squared plus 4, which gives us y is equal to 3 fourths. So our point will be 0, 3 fourths. Let me save that page. I stay away from that chili today. Pretty good chili. I never made it before that way. I made it without meat and um, kind of a vegetarian chili. Good. Spicy. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Same instructions. Uh, determine the point at which uh, graph of the function has a horizontal tangent line. Let me make sure I didn't skip one. Yeah. So we got y is equal e to the x cosine x at uh, between 0 and pi. Okay, well, first th first step we know is to find derivative. So this will be our p, and this will be our q. p prime, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. q prime, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we're going to have p prime q plus p q prime. Again, your product rule is something times something else. can be anything. Well, p prime is e to the x uh, times q, which is cosine x plus p, which is e to the x, times q prime, which is negative sine x. Now I notice these both have an e to the x in common, so I can factor that out. And that gives us cosine x minus sine x. Step 2, set that equal to 0. So I'll set um, e to the x times cosine x minus sine x equal to 0. Set each one of those e zero factor property from college algebra. You got zero on one side, you factored the other side, you set each factor equal to zero. So I'll set e to the x equal to zero, and I'll set cosine x minus sine x equal to zero. Now let's start with the e to the x equals zero. This is an exponential equation, and our steps for solving an exponential equation is first step is get the part of the variable in the exponent by itself. No numbers in front of it, no numbers after it. Well, that's done. Step two is to take natural log of both sides. So I'll take ln of both sides. Now when I do that, you got natural log of 0, which you can't have, so that side dr drops away. So let's take a look at this one. Um, I'll take the negative sine x to the right side, and we get cosine x is equal to sine x. And um, let's 
here's pi over 6, which is square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. Here's um, pi over 4, which is um, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Here's um, pi over 3, which is uh, 1 half square root of 3 over 2. This, uh, this here is 0, which uh, this point is 1, 0. This point here is uh, pi over 2, which is uh, 0, 1. Here's 2 pi over 3, which is negative 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Here's 3 pi over 4, which is negative square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. And here's uh, 5 pi over 6, which is negative square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Now we're looking between, oops, here's pi, which is um, negative 1, 0. We're looking between 0 and pi. So these are our angles we're dealing with on a unit circle. Specifically, we're looking where cosine is equal to sine. Cosine is your x, and sine is your y. So if I go around here and look at all my points, I'm looking for where they're the same. They're the same right here, which tells us that uh, x is equal to pi over 4. Okay, step 3. Plug that back into your original problem and find out your, what your y value is. So we've got y is equal to e to the x cosine x. So let's plug in pi over 4. So we've got e to the pi over 4 cosine pi over 4. Cosine is the x part, which is square root of 2 over 2. So this becomes e to the pi over 4 times square root of 2 over 2, which gives us, um, let's see, e to the pi over 4 square root of 2 all over 2. So our point then, we said x was pi over 4. And this one is e to the pi over 4 square root of 2 over 2. And that's our answer. Now let's say you weren't very comfortable with the um, with this right here. To solve that uh, using our trig equations from, from if you took trig, this is an alternative way to solve it. Well, I can you can always square both sides. So I go ahead and square both sides. And I get cosine squared is equal to sine squared. Now we have sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, which means uh, I could take this cosine squared to the right side, which means that this sine squared here I could rewrite as 1 minus cosine squared. Now I can take that negative cosine squared to the left side, so we got cosine squared plus cosine squared equal to 1, which gives us 2 cosine squared is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 2, and we get um, cosine squared is equal to 1 half. Drop our squared. This is square root property from college algebra. If you got something squared equal to the other side, you drop your squared, and you put a plus or minus square root around the other side. Now, if I did a little bit of simplifying, I'll skip some steps here. But this would become square root of 2 over 2, which would give us, if we look around our unit circle, it'd give us pi over 4. It'd also give us 3 pi over 4, because we're looking where cosine is equal to either a positive square root of 2 or a negative square root of 2 over 2, which is right here and right here. Now, when you take both sides to a power, you'll get the right answers, but sometimes you get false answers, too. So if we go back and check this, uh, we find that 3 pi over 4 doesn't work in our original equation. So that's the alternative way you could have solved that. Uh, let me save that. There we go. Yeah, let's look at our next problem. He's getting into the second derivative. Some of these are nice, some of these are nasty. Got f of x is equal to 2x plus 5x to the negative 3. 
Well, to find the second derivative, we first take our first derivative. Well, the derivative of 2x is 2. This one, take your power, put it out in front, lower it by 1. So that gives us 2 minus 15x to negative 4. Now to find our second derivative, and you see we put uh, two little tick marks here. Our second derivative of f, uh, 2 goes away. Uh, you just keep taking, like I said, just keep taking derivative. A negative 15 stays, take your power, put it out in front, lower it by 1. Which gives us 60x to the negative 5, which gives us 60 over x to the 5th. And that's our answer. Uh, the next problem. Uh, yeah, I probably got room. I think the last problem is hideous. Maybe not. Um, f of x is equal to cosecant x. Well, for our first derivative, this one's pretty easy. The uh, derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. Now, at this point, uh, this is a product rule, and uh, you can either leave the negative out in front or include it as part of your P or Q. Um, sometimes when I leave it out in front, I screw it up and then forget to carry it through. I did that in class the other day. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and include it in my P here. And then this will be my Q. That way I don't have to worry about carrying it through. So for uh, typically, if you got some nasty number there, you don't want to include it. Like if I have a square root of 3 over 5 or something like that, just put it out in front. Don't worry about it. Well, uh, P prime, the negative carries out in front, and then derivative of the cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. Now for Q prime, the derivative of uh, uh, cotangent becomes negative cosecant squared. So our formula is P prime Q plus P Q prime. So for our second derivative, uh, P prime well, negative, negative is positive, so that gives us cosecant cotangent times Q, which is cotangent, plus P, which was on negative cosecant, times Q prime, which was negative cosecant squared. Okay, let me check all that. P prime... Okay, P prime was this right here, so that's positive cosecant cotangent times Q, which is cotangent, and then plus, and then um, P, which is negative cosecant, and times Q prime, which is negative cosecant squared. Of course, a negative times a negative is positive, and I see that these all have a cosecant in common, so I'll factor that out. And uh, then that leaves us cotangent times cotangent, which is cotangent squared. Negative times negative is positive. This cosecant's gone, so that gives us plus cosecant squared. And I think I tried to simplify this in class, and it didn't really go anywhere. Let's see if that's a true statement. This is 1 over sine, cosine over sine. Eh, I could merge it into a single fraction, but typically, um, when you got trig functions, you don't try to put it as a single fraction. Now, th uh, I said this was close to being able to do something with it. Remember our Pythagorean identities. You got sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. You got tangent squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. You got 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. Notice how this has a trig function squared and this one has a trig function squared. So I come up here and look at these and I see it matches this one. And uh, I could take this over to this side and get um, cosecant squared minus cotangent squared, which is close to that, but it's not exact, is it? So, um, or I could um, rewrite the cosecant squared in here as one pl one plus cotangent squared, or solve this for cotangent squared. Remember, there's a lot of different ways you can work this. Um, like I could take that one over. And this is what I did in class. I took um, the one over, and I got cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared minus one. Well, I could rewrite, um, I'll show it to you. 
I could rewrite the cotangent squared as cosecant squared minus 1. Then the plus cosecant squared carries down here. Which then would give us cosecant squared plus cosecant squared is 2 cosecant squared minus 1. Is that any simpler than what I circled up here? Don't know. Different books would probably handle it different than how far they take it. But I wish I'd come up some kind of uh, universal standards for math. Drives me, uh, drives me bats when I look at different, uh, different calculus books and they got uh, different ways they write their answer. Worked as a computer programmer for 13 years and I like standards. I like things to be the same. Consistency. Okay, number 21. And there is a little bit, like, you know, usually people agree no negative exponents and so forth. Okay, I want to find a second derivative to this. There's different ways you could do this. I could use a quotient rule, or I could, if I wanted to, rewrite this as e to the x times x to the negative 2 and use a product rule. Uh, which way is uh, simpler? Uh, that's probably debatable. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the quotient rule. So this will be P, and this will be Q. So I need P prime, which would be um, e to the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And I need Q prime, which x squared becomes 2x. So we're going to have P prime Q minus P Q prime over Q squared. So for our first derivative... P prime was e to the x times q, which is x squared, minus p, which is e to the x, times uh, q prime, which was 2x, all over q squared. So we'll have x squared squared. Now let me double check that. Uh, P prime, um, times, sometimes I go off my rants about standards and <laughs> then I screw something up. Now, I notice up on top that they have um, something in common. They have an e to the x, and they both have an x. So I can factor out an x, e to the x. And uh, that leaves me a single x there, minus that e to the x is gone, this is x is gone, so I've got 2. Over, when you raise one exponent to another exponent, you multiply them, so that's x to the fourth. Now here, um, this x and this x to the fourth simplifies. So this gives me e to the x times x minus 2 over x to the third. Okay, now um, different ways you could do this particular one. Um, you could, again, try to revise the product. And I think I'd make it harder, to be honest. Um, I could go ahead and multiply this through if I don't want to worry about um, about you know, having the parentheses there, I think it'd make it harder. Um, so this is the quotient rule. We've got something divided by something on the bottom. So this will be P, and this will be Q. Now for our P, we got e to the x times x minus 2. To find this, we're going to have to use a product rule. Well, this, um, I'm going to use different letters. Uh, what did I use in class? Uh, let's say U and V. This will be u, not that I make this very good, and that will be my v. So u prime, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and v prime, the derivative of x minus 2 is 1. So our formula will be u prime v minus u v prime. So then to find p prime, uh, e prime we said was e to the x times v, which was x minus 2, minus u, which is e to the x, times v prime, which was 1. And um, they both have an e to the x in common, so I'll factor that out. And then that leaves me with x minus 2 minus 1, which gives us e to the x times x minus 3. Almost added those numbers wrong. Okay, so then q prime. q prime is a lot easier. That's p prime. Key prime would be, or key prime. q prime will be 3x squared. Could drink it early in the morning. Uh, what was P anyway? P was um, oh there it is. E to the x 
e to the x, x minus 2, and q was x to the third. Okay, so we have everything for our formula now. So we didn't mess anything up. Let me double check real quick. U prime. No nature's starting to call. I've been drinking too much. Pop, that is. <laughs> I don't actually drink at all. Um, killed enough brain cells when in my youth. Don't need to kill anymore. Okay. So then our formula for our second derivative, I'm assuming it's f prime, or f double prime. Let me write down my formula first. Get all excited, last problem. Okay, so our formula is p prime q minus p q prime. You can't hardly go wrong if you write down your formula. Then you just plug in everything in the appropriate place. So for our second derivative, p prime is e to the x, x minus 3 times q, which is x to the third, minus p, which was e to the x, x minus 2, times q prime, which is 3x squared, over q squared, which would be um, x to the third squared. Um, was it that was really x to the third? Yeah, it was. Okay. So let me double check all that. p prime... Okay, this times this, this times this, okay. Now what's up on top? I know they both have an e to the x and they both have an x squared. So I'll factor out uh, x squared e to the x. Now here that's gone. Uh, one of the, Two of these are gone, so that leaves me 1x. So we've got x times x minus 3. Uh, minus, that e to the x is gone, that x squared is gone, so we've got 3 times x minus 2 over x to the 6. Okay, we got x to the power over x to the power. You subtract them. 6 minus 2 is 4, so we got x to the fourth left downstairs. So we got e to the x. I'm going to write that here. x to the fourth. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. We've got e to the x times x squared minus 6x plus 6 over x to the fourth. And that's our second derivative, barring any basic algebra mistakes. And uh, I'll give the disclaimer that um, if I do have any mistakes anywhere in this video, math -wise, like basic math, adding, subtracting, or basic algebra, the sun was in my eyes, um, uh, kids were screaming in the house, uh, there's some kind of excuse for it. Couldn't be I'm going senile. Uh, let me save that page, and then I'll stop the recordings. Fifteen pages. I wonder how long this video went. Oops. One hour and 43 minutes.